Good evening. I'd like to bring the uh, May 15th planning board meeting uh, to order. Um, in front of you, you have the uh, minutes of the April 23rd meeting. Uh, are there any uh, questions or? Could I have a motion that uh, we accept the minutes? Move to accept the minutes from the April second. 23rd meeting. We have a second. Second. All those in favor, vote by raising the right hand. We have in front of us uh, correspondence uh, this evening, uh, a notification of the Maine Association of Planners annual meeting a report to the Town Council from the Cape Elizabeth Historic Preservation Study Committee, uh, zoning news for April of 2001, a letter from B. Hall regarding the non-conforming lot zoning amendment, and a letter from L. Murray re signage. Uh, at this point, uh, we'll get into our first uh, Bit of old business, uh, the Sparrowink Medical Center amended site plan, a request by the Maine Medical Center for amendments to the previously approved site plan for the Sparrowink Medical Building, located at 155 Sparrowink Ave, to construct the 1,016 square foot addition. <coughs> if uh, <coughs> you'd like to step forward and bring us up to date at this point. Mr. Chair. Uh, as before, I would ask to be recused from consideration of this application. Uh, do we have anybody on the board that disagrees with his request? Granted. I'll be back. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Paul Gray. I'm the Vice President of Planning for Maine Medical Center. Uh, we are here uh, for the public hearing to address the uh, site plan amendment. Sperwick Medical Office Building. Uh, we have resubmitted to you uh, the, the materials uh, that were reflecting the changes that were made uh, following our walk around the site, uh, I guess uh, two or three weeks ago, and those related primarily uh, to the issue of uh, some of the landscaping, uh, as well as the necessary assurances that we fact, we'll make the necessary repairs to the parking lot to, to bring it up to an appropriate uh, standard of use. Uh, in correspondence, actually in, in telephone uh, correspondence today uh, with staff, the issue was raised relative to uh, an easement for the town. And uh, there is the existing easement that uh, is uh, with the main department of transportation. We will do whatever we can do to help facilitate that discussion. Obviously, it's not something we own to, to give away at this point, but we'd certainly be willing to work with, with you and the staff to, to do whatever is necessary to, to come to a resolution on that issue. We, in fact, uh, have, have tried to make a contact today through the Department of Transportation with the, one of our attorneys who knows an attorney who works there. We're unable to resolve that issue today, but certainly we've opened that communication with them, and I think that's evidence that we're, we're clearly interested in working to, to make that a possibility. But again, it's, it's going to take us and you and the town and, and the department to, to work through that. But we'll try to do everything we can to assist in that process. Okay. Any questions, I guess? Um, at this point, uh, I'm pleased you brought us up to date. I think we will discuss that issue later. Um, and do whatever we can to try to help you put this through this evening. Uh, at this point, though, um, uh, it, we would open this up to a public hearing regarding this uh, project. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to uh, uh, bring some points to us, uh, please do at this time. Would you come to the podium and introduce yourself, please? I'm 
Vincent Oliver. I live at 152 Sperling Avenue. And I got the notice uh, Monday. And I, I'd like to have an explanation of, uh, I didn't quite hear the gentleman, of what's going to happen to the property, how it's going to be used. Could you explain that to me? Yes. I'm not opposed to this. I just want information. I'll be glad to do it. If, if you'd like to hear it, he, he'd probably like to make that presentation, if that's all right with you. What's that? Uh, if you would uh, let him take the podium, I think he will bring you up to date, if you would like. I'm going to just, that's, that's all right. You might just want to stand right up here, okay. and I'll explain it for you. What we're going to do is... Knock the board down here. I'm, as I'm sure you're familiar with the existing property, and in this large open area right here, where the, here's the parking lot, right here, here's Spurwing, Spurwing Avenue down here, okay, uh, this is the large open area, there's the existing building. What we're going to do is on the front of the building, add a small piece that's about 500 square feet on each level. It's going to be on the right hand side? Mm-hmm, right there. And what's going to go in there is an elevator. I see. Oh. And so the elevator will make it possible for people to go up and down in the building in a much easier uh, way than currently exists. Other than that, we're going to change a little of the landscaping in this area, add a little more landscaping mm -hmm. on this side, repair the parking lot completely because it's deteriorated. Yeah. And we're going to move the handicap parking, which is currently down around right here. Right. We're going to move the handicap parking right next to here so people can come out, come into the elevator, and go up or down in the building. And now, what's going to happen to the, uh, who's going to be in the property? Is it, uh, it will continue to be the physicians that are in there now. The same as it, same it is now. now. There will be one new tenant yet to be signed up, uh, but the existing group that's in there will continue to be there. I see. There will be no change in the use mm -hmm. inside. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, sir. I'm Wynn Briggs, and I was a, a former tenant. In fact, I was a former owner of this building, and I would just like to speak in favor of the uh, progress that's been made. We put that parking lot in 30 years ago, and I'm amazed it's lasted as long as it had when Ken Maxwell was sitting on the board there. Uh, he suggested that we, <laughs> we didn't have adequate drainage. He's correct. So having that redone is appropriate. Putting the elevator in, I think, is an excellent improvement. We've been, I've been running up and down the stairs. I'll continue to run up and down the stairs when I pick up my mail. Our goal when we first got this building going some 30 years ago was to provide a, an adequate, modern facility for the people of this town. We thought from a business point of view, it would be good for us as practitioners, and, uh, and that has been the case. And I think we've provided reasonable service, and I'm pleased to see the medical center who have purchased the building continue to look for the improvement because the building does need some uh, renovation work and we will have new offices. I shouldn't say we, those young squirts in the back row will have uh, new offices uh, upstairs and uh, I would very much support this. I think the community will very much benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, discuss this project? Uh, hearing no uh, more people coming up, I will uh, close the public hearing. And at this point, uh, I will open it up to the board uh, for discussion. Mr. Shrella. Actually, my question's for Maureen. On the drainage easement issue, Maureen, um, Mr. Harding's letter, is he just looking for a copy of the easement with uh, the state, or is, or is it something that has to be negotiated and obtained? It seems from reading this that he's just looking for a copy of an existing easement. Right, and, and what I'd like to do is just update you on what has happened since okay. he wrote that letter. He had asked for information on, on drainage easements in a prior letter. Um, he asked for it again. We have since learned that... Uh, the concern is that there's a lot of water coming off of Spurwink Ave, crossing the property, and that there ought to be some permanent protection that that water can continue to do what it's doing now. Um, in fact, there is some protection right now. Uh, the state of Maine Department of Transportation has a drainage easement that crosses over the property. 
Um, and when they were responsible for Spring Week Ave, that was more than adequate. But since that easement has been conveyed to the state, Spring Week Ave has been conveyed to the town of Cape Elizabeth. So this town engineer is now saying that he would like the town, he's recommending that the town have a drainage easement to take care of the drainage off of that road. Um, the original thought was, could we ask the state to convey the easement to the town? Uh, the general sense was that it would probably take longer to have that happen than to just get a new easement from the applicants. So and the, the other problem is that the current easement that MDOT has does not specify a location on the site. It just says drainage. Uh, when the town has an easement, every time I send one of those easements to the town attorney, he looks for a meets and bounds description. Um, so my suggestion was that it might be just as easy for the applicant to convey to the town a new drainage easement that has a meets and bounds description describing where the drainage is right now and to address the applicant's concern that they may want to do things in the future that would interact with this drainage easement, that we insert language into the easement that says that uh, the applicant can move the easement with the permission of the town and the town could not unreasonably withhold that permission. So where we are right now is that I had a long conversation with the town engineer yesterday. He's very concerned that he does not want to hold up the applicant with construction of this project. But at the same time, he is adamant that he thinks this is, this is important enough that the town should have some kind of easement. Uh, the suggestion that, that right now we're looking at is um, to place a condition on the approval that an easement be conveyed to the town and that uh, it not, that a no building permit issue to start work on the site until at least an easement draft has been submitted that's acceptable to the town attorney. Uh, the concern is that, you know, there's stuff out there that MDOT has. They may, it may take them a long time to convey to us. Um, <coughs> it's not a question, I believe, of the applicant being unwilling to provide for the town's concerns, um, but how we work in the timing with our own requirements. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, and does the applicant now understand the, the, the request? I think I do. <laughs> because before, I think what you were talking about was going to the state DOT and asking that their easement be conveyed. Now what we're talking about is granting another, granting another easement. And as far as, given that we've not researched it, Given that we've not had adequate time to research all of the issues related to that, but at first review today, um, it seemed possible that we could, in fact, grant that kind of, I'm not an attorney, but speaking with our counsel, that it would be possible to grant that kind of easement. Um, the, the issue is what standing, if any, the question that was raised today was what standing, if any, uh, the Department of Transportation would have relative to that additional easement. No one knew the answer to that question today. So, question, Maureen, relative to that. Would he have to go to DOT, or is it a property owned by Cape Elizabeth at this point? Um, my suggestion would be that I think what the town wants is guaranteed provision for drainage to continue to travel the way it's traveling and that we leave up to the applicant whatever is the most expeditious way that they can do that, whether it is to get MDOT to transfer something or whether it is to convey something new. Um, I don't think the town really cares as long as our, our needs to move drainage are protected. Yeah. I mean, not to get into the legal type issues, but let me suggest that if the town is asking the applicant to give them a new easement, and if the meets and bounds of that new easement are where the state DOT easement is, you're still going to have to get them involved. So it may not save a whole lot of time, unless it's in a completely different place. So, uh, And we just simply weren't able to resolve that today. With right. I, no, I understand that. I'm just saying that if you... Even if the, they grant the town an easement and it's over the D state DOT's easement, then you're going to have to get their permission anyway. Uh, 
Are there any other questions at this point of any of the reviews and the standards that are listed here? That everybody happy with those other than the uh, drainage? Did the tree get taken care of in the new plan? I heard it, well, it did. It did, okay. <laughs> Um, are there any uh, thoughts um, that you might have as far as the wording that uh, we might put in here in hopes that we could give them a go-ahead tonight with the uh, proper wording that will allow them to uh, seek out an easement in, in a timely fashion? A condition that... Uh, I guess the question I would have, uh, Maureen suggested that there could be a condition in the approval which right. uh, requires at a minimum uh, the application for the submission of a proposed easement prior to issuance of a building permit. Is that satisfactory to the legal authorities who represent the town and the town engineer that that's far enough along to give us the confidence to say go ahead and start construction? Because we certainly don't want to hold these people up unnecessarily, but we have to make sure we cover our bases as well. Normally, when, when there are easement documents outstanding, we, we state that, that an easement be submitted per the town engineer's letter uh, in a form acceptable to the town attorney. So that would require the applicant to draft something up, submit it to us. We would review it, get it back to him as quickly as possible, and there would be agreement on the form, and that would be considered um, satisfaction of the condition. Um, the subsequent submission of the easement to the council wouldn't hold up the applicant. Once they give us something that, that is legally sufficient, we would consider the condition met. Does that make sense? At, at this point, is anybody interested in uh, moving this along? The only concern that we have is um, if, if the submission is to, to get it in an appropriate form, um, I'm, I'm certain that that can be accomplished. The only issue that I would, I would be concerned about at that point is if there's a determination by DOT that they do have some standing, uh, is that going to delay the, the building permit would be my only question. Well, what I, I don't know the answer. What I was um, thinking personally here... Uh, what would help you is it would give you an extra 30 days if we had to if we had to sit and put this on a hold until our next meeting then you'd lose those 30 days you might then you'd still have to come in front of us if you could accomplish this uh, easement thing within the 30 days you'd be you'd gain yep. and uh, Absolutely. it really has to be done either way but um, if we yep. put this I in see. as a condition it would help you I think in your time I don't know how the rest of the members feel about that, but I, you know, my, my feeling is that time is important to you, it and uh, is. we should try to move this along if we could. So if we could word a condition uh, that would help move this along, I think. Any questions regarding that, Maureen? Have the other issues in the uh, engineer's letter been addressed or satisfied? I spoke to the town engineer, and he said that, that revised plans would be submitted to him, and he was he was satisfied that if the revised plans didn't meet all those conditions, that they shortly would. So he's not concerned with anything else. for the applicant um, regarding the performance guarantee um, I assume you're aware that um, one of the 
conditions may be that we will request a performance guarantee. Has that issue been discussed with you, and did you have any questions or concerns about providing us with such? I don't know that it's been discussed with us, but I can't imagine that we'd have difficulty unless there were some condition I couldn't, couldn't envision that might be part of that guarantee. I'm not sure what that would be. But. Maureen, I guess the town engineer's concern was because the cost of the project was likely to exceed $10,000. Typically, in these cases, we do request such a guarantee. Um, and I gather it has to be in an amount approved by the town engineer. Could you just review his thoughts on, on these issues? The way we usually do those is we ask the applicant to prepare an estimate of all the improvements to the site um, in a detail that includes unit cost and quantity. He reviews it. If he thinks that you've underestimated anything, he makes a change. And then um, you would prepare a performance guarantee, which would either be a letter of credit or an escrow account. And, and we have a form for the letter of credit. So if you wanted to, you could just fill in the amounts and attach the list. I can't imagine that being an issue. Okay. For the sake of review of the board, I just jotted down a condition, some wording that might help us get started thinking about this. But uh, I just said the condition that a drainage easement drafted uh, per the engineer's request prior to the issuance of a building permit. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to. Uh, might want to suggest a slight modification to that. I think we're thinking along the same lines. Uh, we have before us a proposed motion, and what I would suggest that we add as an additional condition is uh, this would be uh, item number three in the motion, that a, that a drainage easement be, is, be submitted by the applicant per the town engineer's comments in a form acceptable to the town attorney. So we cover both the engineer's and the attorney's approvals before the building permit is issued. Would the applicant have any heartache with that? Uh, would you care to draft a motion then? Yes, I would. <coughs> I'd like to offer the following motion. Findings of fact. One, Maine Medical Center is requesting site plan review of a proposed 1,106 square foot addition to the existing Spurwink Medical Building located at 155 Spurwink Avenue which requires site plan review. Two, the town engineer has recommended revisions which will clarify the plans. Three, under section 19-4-4B3, the planning board may require a performance guarantee from the applicant. Four, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that, based on plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Maine Medical Center for site plan review of a 1,106-square-foot addition to the Spurwink Medical Building located at 166 Spurwink Avenue be approved subject to the following conditions. Maureen, I notice there's a difference in the address in this motion. Which is the proper number, 155 or 1? Yes. Make that in the motion be it ordered at 155 Spurwink Avenue be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised and information submitted per the town engineer's letter dated May 8, 2001. Two, that a performance guarantee be submitted by the applicant to the town planner in an amount approved by the town engineer and a form approved by the town attorney and finally approved by the town manager. Three, that a drainage easement be submitted by the applicant per the town engineer's comments in a form acceptable to the town attorney. And four, that there be no issuance of a building permit until the above conditions have been met. A motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Second. A second has been made. Uh, is there any discussion? I guess just, again, so the applicant knows exactly what they need to do. It's my understanding that the condition regarding the drainage easement would also allow for the opportunity to obtain an assignment from the state DOT to the town, as right. well as possibly conveying a new easement, but they have both options. Is that everyone's understanding? I would agree with that. Okay. Any more discussion regarding that amendment? 
Then I will put it to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment as so stated, please show by raising your right hand. Uh, we have carried this motion unanimously. Uh, so your project can move ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. <clears throat> Good evening. The second item on our agenda this evening is the BA District Zoning Amendment. The Town Council has forwarded uh, an amendment regarding the BA District uh, to us for consideration. Um, requesting for zoning, zoning Ordinance Amendment pursuant to Article 10, 19, 3 of Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance, the undersigned landowners in Town of Cape Elizabeth he hereby requested or request that an amendment be made to the text of Article 6 of the Zoning Ordinance. Specifically, uh, we should amend to provide in entirety as follows. The following uses may be permitted only upon, upon approval by the Zoning Board as a conditional use in accordance with Section 19-5-5 conditional use permits however effective, January 1, 2001. No conditional use and permitted non-residential use may simultaneously occur on a single pass of land within bis Business District A. <coughs> At this point, uh, uh, I would like to uh, um, open this up to a he public hearing for those people who have uh, uh, an interest in talking uh, on this subject. So at this point, the hearing is over. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Colleen Walsh. I live at 553 Shore Road. I am the person who put this amendment in to be requested. As all of you are well aware, um, the Cape Elizabeth area near the Cape Irving station during the fall and through the winter. We were of the understanding that Irving was coming in and deciding to put a convenience store at that location and consulting with you about that. Um, in addition to closing the bays that were serving residents, automobiles, and also uh, in relation to a very friendly uh, leaser who is well-liked and well-known in the community, there was a lot of objection to that. And through letter writing and contacts, we were able at that time, and we discovered later that Irving had changed their plans. To us, Mr. and Mrs. Madison, who began this whole effort, to myself and to many other people who signed the petitions that we presented, that's for the moment, in our view, that a large corporation like that could come in at any time and try again at the same location. Um, perhaps we might get tired of objecting to it. Um, we have three convenience stores within walking distance of that area. In consulting with friends and getting some advice, um, this proposal to you was presented to us as a proactive way of perhaps avoiding a situation like that for us, and not only for us, but for other residents who live near VA districts. Um, if you'll notice, the 22 signatures I obtained with this amendment are not from our neighborhood. They're from all over Cape Elizabeth. And these people also shared the concerns that we um, had. I did read Mr. Geraldo's um, views in the Cape Courier. I respect them. It is rather wide-reaching. Um, it's ambitious, but we look at it as proactive, um, a way of preserving the community, much in a way that smaller building lots are being talked about in the newspapers. And uh, if Nothing else, it's at least promoting discussion of the possibility of people's neighborhoods being changed to something that they might not want and avoiding this for other people in the future. 
Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Mike Jordan, uh, part of Jordan Sloan and Garden Center in Cape Elizabeth, who we're not Irving Oil, but we're being classified in the same uh, zoning that you might want to change. Uh, we hear a lot about not changing the character in this town, keeping it rural. We've been in business over 30 years in the same location. Uh, we do a lot for this community. And it's tough when we look at 22 people who can start trying to change what we're going to do for business. Uh, if this goes through, part of our business will be gone. Uh, and later, a few years down the road or so, if we ever wanted to sell the business, we couldn't sell it because that would be a conditional use of the repair shop would have to go. Uh, I just think it's a, a lot more thought should be going into this before any changes are made to this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Duval, and I own uh, property at 546 Shore Road, which somewhat abuts the fire station that's located next to the Irving station. And I faxed this letter to um, Ms. O'Mara, and I'd like to read it for the record. Uh, Dear Planning Board, my name is Mark Duval. I own the property located at 546 Shore Road, Cape Elizabeth. The property is in a business district A and contains four small businesses, a barbershop, Daffodil's Hair, and the Blueberry Patch Gift Shop, and my office for my own business. I take exception to the new amendment now being considered before you for several reasons. One, I understand the intent of controlling certain businesses from expanding their business, but please, not at the expense of all the other small businesses that surround it throughout Cape Elizabeth. As a property owner with certain economic rights, you would, in essence, take away these property rights by limiting me to whom I can lease to. Three, the unintended consequences could be far greater than my own concerns. I feel that all businesses in Cape Elizabeth will be affected by this change. A zone change needs to be have careful consideration by the planning board and by the businesses that will be affected by that change. Please consider my request to withdraw the zoning amendment. I see no reason to push ahead with changes until you have exhausted all possibilities. You can contact me if you need assistance in doing such. Um, I certainly understand the push of the Irving Oil Corporation. I personally dealt with, the, uh, with them on, uh, I'm, I live in South Poland, when they wanted to build a tank farm in South Poland, we objected to it and we held our ground and we forced them out of South Poland. So I certainly understand this situation, and I sympathize with what they're saying, because it is a good business, it's been there for a while, but I certainly don't understand the need to uh, change the structure of businesses that surround Cape Elizabeth. They're all small businesses, this have a huge effect. The four shops that I'm talking about, if one of them were to move out and somebody else is gonna move in, they have to come before you for conditional use, or uh, my understanding of that anyways. And that to me is sort of a hardship that I, don't, I think that needs to be considered by you, the board, who's gonna approve this ultimately. So I think what needs to really look at is what would really stop Irvin from doing what they're doing, if that's what you're looking to do. Um, I know spot zone changes are not legal, but something in that realm. Uh, I think that needs to be really heavily considered because I think there are more businesses. I'm not sure if all the businesses understand that this is coming before you right now. Uh, so I think they need to be really considered. I need to think they need to be addressed in some fashion so that they can have their input into what the zoning looks like for their business. Because there are several stations around here that will be affected by this. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Edward Matterson, Cape Elizabeth, uh, Charles Road. And 
this was just one of the things which was suggested that we, we uh, with some discussions of this, Colleen said, the approach that we could take. Uh, we have very, very, very concerns about changing the character of our neighborhoods. Uh, at the same time, we don't want to impact local businesses. We certainly don't want to put anybody with the name of Jordan out of business in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, at least I don't. Or hamper their their work. Uh, I think it's a dilemma, and I think that we're doing the best thing that we taking the best approach we 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 have at this point. Uh, we've lived with variety stores in that neighborhood. We know what happens, and we know what happens around convenience stores, and. It just changes the, the neighborhood entirely. Uh, I don't have any easy answers for this. I, uh, as I say, we're just we're just trying to take an approach which we feel is is legitimate. At the same time, uh, the the one thing I would like to point out is that business safe zone is an extremely small zone, uh, surrounded by a residential zone, and. Any changes that take place there are, are really uh, magnified by the fact of the uh, incongruity between the two uh, zones being so uh, closely placed. Uh, while there might be a master plan to increase business in those areas, uh, I think it should be considered what, what impact that has on, on the residents, and uh, particularly in a, in, a neighbor, in a community like here in Elizabeth. Uh, I have no objection to, to these small businesses. I, I welcome them. I, I, the character of the businesses that are in Cape Elizabeth are fine uh, for the most part. We, we, and we don't want to impact people who are good neighbors and good business people. Uh, I don't know exactly what the approach is, but this is one approach that was offered to us. Thank you, Mr. Pence. Are there any other speakers at this time? Hearing none, I will uh, draw this uh, hearing to a close. And at this point, uh, open it up for discussion to the planning board members. Uh, to the uh, proponents of this amendment, one of the issues we've discussed in the uh, uh, workshops has been how else their neighbors' concerns could be addressed. And I was wondering if Maureen could take just a few minutes to address how that, how those concerns could be uh, met in the, the site plan review process. For example, hours of operation. If, if uh, Irving did ever come forward with a proposal to, to put in a convenience store. Well, under the current regulations, um, if if the Irving Corporation chose to come forward and convert the existing business to a convenience store, that would trigger site plan review by the planning board. And under the site plan uh, regulations, there are several standards that they would be required to meet. Um, those include standards related to uh, design of the interior parking lot to make sure that there was adequate circulation within the site, uh, especially uh, adequate circulation for emergency vehicles. So that looks at width of lanes in between pumps and buildings. Um, there's also provisions for looking at traffic um, that's created on the site that goes on to abutting areas such as the adjacent intersection um, and how that may create uh, potential accident situations. Uh, there's also provisions for uh, buffering for landscaping, both to preserve existing landscaping and to create new landscaping. Provisions for lighting, uh, there's a specific requirement that uh, lighting on any particular site cannot exceed a lighting level of 0.5 foot candles at the property line, which requires that um, if you're putting lighting on the site, there needs to be a major cutoffs built into the lighting fixture so that you don't have a, 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 a vast uh, spread of light off the, off the site. And also, uh, the planning board did specifically ask about the ability to limit the hours of operation. And this was a question that was raised on a different uh, property in town 
that was a commercial property near residential properties. The response of the town attorney was that the planning board does have the authority to limit the hours of operation as long as they are reasonable in how they do that. So, for example, if you are a restaurant which um, required to be open for dinner in order to be economically viable, you couldn't require the restaurant to close at 7 in the evening. However, um, there's a lot of documentation in the record now that shows how, how late the current Irving station is open, and that seems like the board can consider that as a baseline for what would be considered reasonable for limiting the hours of operation. Yes. Thank you. Well, uh, I guess for me, uh, the issue really comes down to whether it's good policy to actually change a zoning amendment for a, the entire business district in, Bay, in Cape Elizabeth because of a project that hasn't even been uh, applied for as yet. Um, I, I understand that the neighbors that live nearby have would have opposition to such a project if it came before us, but I don't think that looking at the town's best interests as a whole uh, to change the entire zoning amendment and to make it more difficult for small businesses in Cape Elizabeth to do business in Cape Elizabeth is the answer. Um, Cape Elizabeth does not have very many areas where small businesses are even allowed. And to put further restrictions on them because of a potential project that isn't, uh, isn't even here, I, I don't think is, is good policy. And I wouldn't be in favor of, of changing the uh, the zoning for business A uh, to adversely affect the businesses that are there now. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Uh, 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 the part of this that has me somewhat concerned uh, is that I, I think that when you have a zoning ordinance, you should have permitted uses and non-permitted uses. and you should be able to read it and understand what they are. Uh, the first time I read the proposed amendment, I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out what it was. I was then educated in workshop and could see how it really is this sort of combination of, uh, or rather this not allowing combination of a permitted use and a conditional use. Then, then I finally figured it out. and and. I, I see at least what it does, uh, but you can't look at the ordinance and say what's allowed and what's not allowed. Now, I understand the intention, and I don't think that the intention is one that doesn't have any merit, but then I go back and look at the ordinance and try to imagine what different combinations are. Because not, not, I don't think we should just look at just one proposal. Uh, you should think of the kinds of combinations that either would be allowed or wouldn't be allowed. And, and I haven't really seen ones that wouldn't, wouldn't be allowed that I could think of doing if I were a businessman. But on the other hand, uh, I don't think that's my decision to make. And for any that I could imagine, there are probably others also that somebody else could imagine. And, and I think that uh, an ordinance should be a little more, uh, more clean-cut and, and, uh, and fairer to people who have to use it. Thank you, Mr. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I, I would echo the comments that John made. Uh, I think the law of unintended consequences would most certainly apply here were, we, were the town to go forward with this amendment. And I, too, understand and, and uh, sympathize with the motivations of the folks who live near the, the current Irving Station. Uh, I could also assure you folks that were that application to come before the board while I was a member, I would certainly rigorously apply all of the requirements of site plan review, and I would fully expect that anyone else on the board would do the same. Uh, but we have to have a, a zoning ordinance that makes sense and that, that's fair for all the property owners, including the businesses who are currently in that district. So given that, uh, I don't think I can support this proposed amendment. 
Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. <clears throat> as just one member of the board, I'm in support of the code as it's written now. Um, when the applicant who has been mentioned early this evening came before the planning board and workshop, the board in using the existing code voiced a great number of concerns in regards to lighting, curb cuts, traffic control, signage, landscape buffering, uh, traffic flow, number of gas pumps, where the gas tanks were going to be laid, uh, strongly suggesting the applicant look at where the actual boundaries of the town right-of-ways were, because they've kind of disappeared with the present site, uh, to urge them strenuously by board members to work closely with the abutting neighbor as far as shared parking. Uh, then it is my understanding, because the discussion was actually very loud, we heard it, they met with the neighborhood out in this room after the workshop and heard your concerns. Uh, when an applicant sees those concerns in an active neighborhood and uh, a planning board that's going to rigorously enforce existing codes, uh, that applicant and one other that I can remember in my service on the board uh, simply decided it was much too costly to do business in their form here in this town, and they never approached the planning board again. Uh, I don't really think uh, Irving Oil, for one, will ever come back before this planning board. They have other sites, they have other resources, they have other markets which are much stronger. Uh, so using our existing code, I think we can meet and continue to meet the concerns of neighborhoods who have business zones nearby so that they aren't impacted severely with any business development that may happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Are there any other discussions? I don't really have anything new to add except to say that uh, we did discuss this extensively at two different workshops. We um, assigned the town planner the task of printing a map of all the businesses by um, business name as well as owner's name within the districts. Um, it is a business dis district, and we don't want to discourage appropriate growth within the district. Um, we will look for businesses to come in and applicants that will make good neighbors to the residential um, abutters. Um, but I, like my, I think most of my fellow board members will um, vote against this as written. Um, I would like to, uh, I understand we do have a draft done here, but I understand that there's been some thoughts about wording. Are there any other comments on that at this point? I mean regarding the uh, draft memorandum? Sure. Yes. <clears throat> One thought that I had for amending the final paragraph of the draft memorandum was to word it as follows. While the planning board understands the motivations of those residents who have proposed the amendment, board members believe that use of existing regulations, such as site plan review, can control possible negative impacts from development. Any thoughts about the wording? Any comments at this point? I would support that change. Pardon me? I would be in support of that change. At this point, uh, there is a motion in front of you if somebody would like to move on this or uh, further discussion. Make a motion. Chairman. Uh, I would move. Uh, make the following motion, uh, Chairman. Uh, be it ordered that based on the information submitted and the facts pr presented, the Planning Board does not recommend the proposed BA District Zoning Ordinance Amendment to the Town Council for consideration. Second. I've heard a motion uh, made and a second. Are uh, there any uh, uh, questions, any discussion at this point? Hearing no discussion, I will raise it uh, to a vote. 
Uh, all those in favor of the motion that's been made, please uh, show by raising their right hand. The motion is carried unanimously. Um, Thank you. <coughs> the third item on the agenda this evening is the historic resource zoning amendment. The uh, town council has requested the planning board uh, a comment on a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance that would delete the historic provisions. Uh, at, at this point, I would like to uh, open it up for discussion to the board. Is there any comments or any discussion that uh, is important at this point? Well, I guess I missed the workshop, so I apologize. But do we know anything any more now than we did before about the... Uh this request. Just the memo. You you received a memo from the town manager. Um, Not in this packet, but in the previous. No, in a previous packet, yeah. there was a memo from oh, the town yeah. manager that responded yeah. to your request for information. Right. That's the only additional information we've received. So the answer is no. We don't know. <laughs> a little bit more. <laughs> I would be very interested to hear what the public has to say about this issue. It's, it, just getting this issue presented to us, it's hard to form any, uh, I guess, permanent opinions as to whether it's uh, advisable to, to do away with, for example, the waiting period for a demolition of a historic structure. Uh, my initial thoughts are that the 45-day waiting period isn't unreasonable, but I would like to hear from the public before I make any final reach any final conclusions. Mr. Chairman, I'd also support the, the uh, tabling of this matter till next month so we could have a public hearing. I'm also uh, in search of some information on how we got from a Blue Ribbon Commission that issued what I thought was a very well-worded and well-thought-out report about a year ago proposing a number of things the town could do to preserve and protect historic structures to today, we have been asked to just delete the provision from the ordinance altogether. So I don't know whether that would come up in the hearing or if there's something that you or Maureen might want to share with us now. Um, I think that's a legit legitimate concern because when I looked at this, the same as you did, I, I felt somebody did an awful lot of work to put that together. It appears that there was a lot of time spent. And I didn't personally think that there were that many sites in Cape Elizabeth that had some historic value to them, but the list is quite large. Right. Yeah, so, uh, any other thoughts on uh, this issue at this point? And, uh, would somebody care to make a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no thoughts on this matter at this time, at least thoughts that will help me draw our conclusion. Uh, like Andy, I'd like to listen to the comments of the public, and uh, therefore I'd like to propose the following motion. Motion for the Board to consider, be it ordered that based on the information provided and the facts presented at the Planning Board tables the Historic Resources Zoning Amendment to the regular June 19, 2001 meeting, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Uh, there's been a motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. And a motion's made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, then I will raise it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion for in front of us, please show by raising their right hand. Uh, the motion has carried unanimously, so uh, at our June 19th uh, regular meeting, we will have a uh, public hearing regarding this change. Before we adjourn, Mr. Chairman, I, I only ask that if Maureen could use all of her influence to get as much 
in the Cape Courier about this public hearing as possible? Because I think it affects a lot of people who may have an interest or own properties, and uh, I'd like to hear their input. You can also get something on the website. Okay. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Does the commission still exist, Maureen, or has it been disbanded? Or? No, it, it, it was the town has a longstanding <clears throat> practice of appointing task forces and committees for specific tasks. Once they complete them, disbanding the committee. So yeah, it has been disbanded since it submitted its report to the council. Well, maybe some of them will come to the public hearing. Hopefully. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. But um, move to adjourn. Uh, seconded. Uh, all those in favor? And the uh, May 15th planning board meeting is brought to a close. Good evening. <laughs>